In today's video, we're going over five signs of an unhealthy gut and five things you can do about it. Welcome to the circle, it's the win team. What is going on on my Wealthy Performers? Welcome back. I'm your host, Chase Wheeler, and in today's video, we're going over five signs of an unhealthy gut and five things you can do about it. Although there are multiple ways to determine the health of your gut, there are kind of five of the easiest and biggest indicators for gut health. We can think of the gut as the center of our health's universe with over 70% of the immune cells located in there. When we experience gut problems, it's normally a sign of bigger issues. Number one, let's check our mood. If you have big fluctuations in mood, it's not very stable. It's probably a sign that you have some gut issues. What do we mean by these fluctuations? We mean mood disorders, mood swings, stress, depression, anxiety, and kind of the inability to maintain that happiness. It's kind of unrealistic that we're happy every day. Everyone's going to have those cloudy, rainy days. But if you have really, again, that fluctuation, uh, inability to maintain and to see a bigger picture, the gut-brain connection is probably suffering from some miscommunication. So we know that the gut actually also has neurons, just like the brain, and they speak to each other. And when there's issues here, there's going to be issues here. And we can actually improve our serotonin level or the hormone that creates happiness by improving our gut. Again, they talk to each other. Serotonin is largely found in the gut. So if we improve our gut health, we can improve our mental health. Number two is a topic that gets me probably a little bit too excited, and that's checking your poo, checking the quality of your stool. Again, it's probably not a surprise that when you eat something, it goes down our esophagus, small intestine, up through our colon and out the other side. So it's a direct indicator of how our gut health is doing. With most of our immune cells located in the colon, which is the portion of our gut right before we excrete it, the, uh, the quality of your stool is gonna let you know, how's our gut doing? You can do things like send out stool samples to see what levels of bacteria are in there, good versus bad, or you can check out a friendly Bristol stool chart, which you don't have to go anywhere. Um, you do have to look in the toilet, but it's a quick test just to see how you're doing. Number three, we're going to check our immune system. Again, the gut houses 70% of our immune system. So gut health is a critical sign of how our immune and health system is functioning. A malfunction within our gut and immune system can lead to all kinds of issues such as autoimmunity, cancer, psoriasis, eczema, allergies to food, seasonal allergies. If you experience a little bit more allergies to food or to the weather, or you have some eczema, um, autoimmunity, could be a sign that your gut is not functioning correctly. Number four is obesity. Obesity is actually gonna create chronic low level inflammation, which is gonna take a toll on our gut barrier, our leaky gut, the way that food interacts with our gut. One of the ways it's gonna mess with that interaction is by, by creating more obese cells. So the obese cells are going to consume more energy. So we're gonna eat a lot more and that energy is not gonna be used in the right places. It's gonna be used to create fat cells to hold more fat, which reinforces more fat, and we have the problem of obesity. Number five is to check your bones. <sighs> so this one is kind of a surprise to me, but actually gut health is linked to osteoporosis or degradation of bone. Healthy gut microbiomes have been shown to increase bone mass and improve uh, osteoporosis. And some of the causes of osteoporosis have been found to be intestinal barrier issues, leaky gut, good bacteria versus bad bacteria, um, which can lead to poor nutritional absorption, hence uh, the idea that our bones might become a little brittle. Number two is that gut-brain axis co communication. So when there's issues with how our gut communicates with our brains, we have problems with our bones. And number three is an immune uh, system imbalance. So what are five things we can do to improve our gut health? Number one, probiotics. We can consume one probiotic with every meal, I have a nice article coming out, or maybe it's out already about probiotics. And that goes into number two, which is prebiotics. So probiotics and prebiotics are gonna work together to create a healthy gut ecosystem. There are natural ways to get probiotics and prebiotics. There are supplemental ways to get probiotics and prebiotics if you need it, although we always recommend going natural. Number three, we wanna avoid chronic inflammation and stress. So chronic inflammation is going to eat away at our gut lining. I remember our microvilli gut lining. I have a little video about it. So it's going to eat away at our microvilli. We're going to be digesting on our intestinal lining, stomach lining, which is going to lead to leaky gut, uh, intestinal barrier issues. And then uh, systematic stress has been shown to negatively impact the populations of our 
microbiome. It's going to increase the bad bacteria and decrease the good bacteria. It's also been shown that chronic stress can literally change our brain, the grooves in our brain, the way our brain forms, and that's going to impact our gut-brain connection. We can help relieve some of this chronic inflammation and stress with some mindfulness meditation practice, um, some yoga, some deep breathing work, deep, deep breath work, a little bit of exercise, and watching our caffeine intake. Number four, it's no surprise, is to make daily exercise, daily movement a part of your routine. We know sitting is bad for our health. We know that it takes just a little bit of time of activity, of movement. You don't have to go too hard where you're sweating nonstop like I like to do, but just a little bit of movement, just not sitting all day is going to help improve our gut health. It's going to help change the levels of bad bacteria and good bacteria. Number five, we're going to focus on our diet. So it has actually been shown that you can change your microbiome in as little as 24 hours based on what you eat. We're going to focus on eating anti-inflammatory foods to get rid of any of that inflammation created by potential daily stress. We're going to try to get a higher ratio of plants to animal protein in our diet. And we're just going to obviously avoid gluten and processed foods, sugar, anything that's going to create inflammation, anything that's going to challenge our um, digestive system. That's it for me. I hope you're now able to better understand your gut health and what you can do to improve it. As always, stay wealthy. Welcome to the circle. It's the winning team.